Kodakachi vlog, May 18, 2024. Flint's on the fly, coming to you from life in between the volcanoes. We're still alive. We've kind of been on hiatus. There's been, um, so moving here, we've been way more focused on working and we've been a lot busier and uh, a lot of screen time every day makes us not want to make videos, really. There's just not a lot of energy left to do something like this. And honestly, we did have some weird stuff with some kind of weird trolls after we got to uh, Kodakachi, which kind of made us sad. Yeah, sad. Like, I don't know. There's some, uh, there's some weirdos out there. And uh, if you're one of them, I hope you have a good day and a good life, but like, go find somebody else, you know, like, anyway, we have had more power on than not. And not everybody in Ecuador loses power all the time. There are people that are on electrical grids close to hospitals or water, water plants, water treatment plants that don't lose power. So keep that little nugget in your pocket. But it's a good idea to buy a battery pack or some kind of, is that what you call them? Uninter uninterrupted yeah. power supplies or solar generators yeah. or something like that, just in case you do and you're affected because that's just the nature of life and climate change and in a developing country. We have a little solar generator, which is just a big battery pack, essentially, that can be charged with solar panels. We have used it, and um, it's worked fine for us. It's kept our router on and our internet flowing and laptops running, so that's all we've needed. The weather in Kodakachi, since we've been here, it's been eight months now. It's been phenomenal weather since we've been here. Of course, we haven't really had the rainy season that we should have had, so... Hence the uh, hydroelectric plants haven't been running properly and there's been electrical shortages, but it has made for very beautiful days, sunny days. Yeah, definitely a lot of blue sky time. Even if the clouds roll in in the afternoon, you're probably gonna get sun in the morning. This has probably been our favorite weather in all of Ecuador. So far, yeah. Cl Malacatos is close. It was a little bit warmer in Malacatos, but there is something else to add to that. So the weather's been good here. And really, this is an easy place to live for us lifestyle-wise. So we can ride bikes into town. We can shop on our bikes in town. There's plenty of restaurants in this town. Um, access to everything we need. And it's quaint. It's a tourist town, famous for yeah. leather making. And a lot of people come in on the weekends. And it's just an enjoyable atmosphere to be in. It's, it's quite tranquil. It really is. We have heard people ca um, call Kodakachi the cemetery, but there's a, there's a decent amount of retired gringos here. For good or for bad. I mean, that's just what it is. The funniest thing was probably our 80-year-old neighbor that said Kodakachi is where gringos come to die. <laughs> this area is definitely a fishbowl. Right. So, kind of... I might come across as paranoid if you see me on the street. I'm just wondering, like, right. what's being recorded and replayed for other people. And the gossip is real. The fishbowl life is because, yeah. you know, if they're telling us, <laughs> if they're spilling tea in front of you, uh, they're spilling tea about well, you. There's just things no matter where you are, no matter how amazing and beautiful it is, there's always going to be people things. <laughs> And people. people, like I wasn't prepared Whoa, for how people. much, you know, the community's name has gardens in it and I underestimated how prominent that would be. Like there's just a lot of noise associated, whether it's uh, the and weed whackers be any or Kahunto. this is just in general. The water pumps, the lawnmowers, the, the barking dogs, the... All of these things. Remodeling. And like, there's like nonstop remodeling everywhere. And there's a lot of workers that are coming in and out. And for most people, if you are a retired person and you're thinking about moving down here, you live here, you probably don't even notice these things. Like, we notice because 
we work. And a lot of my job is, you know, we film, I film a lot of videos for my work. I see clients online. So I'm very aware of all of the noise. I'm not saying that it should be quiet or that anything needs to change to make me happy. And I understand that, you know, you come in, you buy a property, there are probably projects that you're going to want to do. And that has been fine. fine. Our most recent challenge has arisen when we did something to bring ourselves joy. <laughs> we don't own, we rent. And one thing we kind of weren't really prepared for, or we didn't realize how at the top of our priority list outdoor living space was. And coming from Malacatos, we lived outside. Oh, like a vast majority of our time was spent yeah. outside. If the sun was out, we were outside in the shade. So we took this beautiful home that had everything else we needed, but not necessarily that. And we've been missing it a lot. So there's basically, you can be on the front porch right up to the dirt road that we live on, or there is space on top of our garage that is a patio. Terrace. A terrace. Like it's got stairs up to it. It's meant to be living space. So Matthew, who is super talented and skilled, within two weeks time, learned how to work with bamboo and created a pretty epic, amazing hammock stand for us to enjoy. But apparently, our joy causes <sighs> sadness. <laughs> There's neighbors that we don't we don't know who they are exactly, but there are multiple neighbors that had a lot of duress and suffering because of having to look up above our garage onto our terrace and see a bamboo structure up there. And there was a little bit of drama and there was some, now nobody came to us directly. So this is, you know, we're poking fun and we're being a little shitty about it, but at the same time. So this is how it went down. Our neighbors, instead of coming to us, and again, we don't know who they are. And that puts us in a tricky place, like, because now we're super suspicious. <laughs> There's not too many neighbors. I mean, most neighbors in here are super cool, right? And so, we have friendly relations with everybody, so it's hard to know exactly. It's hard to fathom who would care about this enough to voice their complaints to right. the property managers. So... Matt lets me know on a walk that they've told us to take it down and Matt is sad because I finally had hammock happiness in Kotakachi because we have, we have had, we have tried to find good places to hang out in nature. They don't exist here. They cut no down trees. all the trees or any of the small little groves of trees that are available. They're all boxed in in these, um, um, barbed wire little areas that you can't get to. So anyway. So Matt is sad, but... I'm sad. But I'm, I'm a people pleaser too at the same time. And I'm a confrontationalist. <laughs> is that? So he's like resigned. Okay, we have to take this down. And I'm like, I know that part of the lease that they're talking about. And that is not what it says. So... Long story short, I sent the lease to a lawyer that we've worked with in the past. He responded within 20 minutes and said, you don't have to take that down. So we're not taking it down. And we, we shared that with the property manager, with the owners, and it's just kind of a weird, you know, we kind of can't believe that it's an issue to begin with. And then to have this kind of drama around it, it's just, it's really shitty. It's really shitty and um, makes us feel uneasy about the neighbors in the neighborhood now, honestly. I mean, not that we were gonna stay here. I mean, we only had a limited time here anyway, but just for somebody to be that petty and that, I mean. It just something. seems like sometimes we lose sight of perspective. Like Absolutely. we are all economic refugees yeah. living in a developing country off of a dirt road. Yeah. How could our little hammock stand make people <laughs> so upset? The little people in Ecuador really do have rights. And so not being afraid to stand up for your rights, really. And um, 
it's still sad that you have to do that, but at the same time, like, we need our hammocks, so. So we'll disrupt that piece of others so that we can maintain ours. But that's what's going on. That's our vlog for right now. There's some other things we're gonna talk about and share, but um, not for today. And we do wanna offer a public forgiveness to all of you. And we wish you the best. But I'm the confrontational. <laughs> Like seriously, if you have a question and you leave it in the comments or an email, we're probably going to answer it. If you leave a 500 word essay in the comments and then say thoughts, I'm not reading that. Like there are people here that specialize in helping others transition. Like that's not us. We we're, don't even want to uh, do that for money. We watched yeah. one of Alvi's videos the other day and he does that. He says, ask me anything you want, $25 an hour. Awesome. Yeah. That's not our jam. And then to complain about us across videos, like find somebody else. Find hire, somebody yeah, else. hire somebody. Like we're just sharing our experience. We don't care. We're not trying to be something else. We never said we were experts in anything or we just always said we were middle-aged Americans transitioning to an expat life in Ecuador. And that's what we've shared. So. And as far as that goes, we still love living in Ecuador. We love Ecuador. We will probably be moving to a different area shortly um, to be determined. But this whole Ecuador experience and the uh, being able to live like this and travel around has been fantastic. We've met great people. They're fantastic people, great stories. And it's just, you know, it's life. Things happen everywhere you go. It doesn't matter. There's, uh, there's no nirvana here yet, but uh, Ecuador is a pretty good place to live and we're still happy to have made this move. And if you stuck with us and you support us and you give us a like, you know, thank you. Yeah. Like those of you that aren't the word, <laughs> Thanks I'm not going to repeat that, but we appreciate you. We really do. A big part of this was so that we could meet other people. So that's all for now. Boop, 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 boop. I thought we were wrapping it up and then oh, we went yeah, back in. I so. did. Curveball.